All right, so here we are in Inkscape. Um, we're going to import our DXF files into this program, and this is how we're going to go from our DXF files to something the laser can actually cut. So let's do that now. Um, so I'm going to go to File, Import. I'm going to go find where I put those DXF files. So on mine, it is going to be in... What am I making? Clock. So I'm looking for clocks. And then this was the four layer hint. Oh, I forgot the P in that. Let me go up and see if I can change the name now, right? I said heptagon and it should be heptagon. Yeah, there we go. Oh, perfect. And then we'll go to DXF files. I'm going to open up layer one. Um, you should say read from file for method of scaling, although it doesn't work. It should work, but it doesn't. Um, and then the rest of it, I think you can just leave it alone. Check my settings for what you're doing. Click OK. And it drops that DXF file in here. Notice, though, that it's way too big. Um, so we need to scale this down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this lock on. What this lock does is it scales both the width and the height together. Um, and then I'm going to come over here to the height, change this unit to centimeters, and I'm going to look at my, oh, I didn't look at the number when it came over. Oh, here it is, 27.254. So instead of 69, it should really be 27.254. Enter. Now that's the correct height. So I need to make these lines into red lines, and red lines are cut lines for the laser. To do that, I'm going to go to Fill and Stroke menu over here. If you don't have a Fill and Stroke over here, go up to Object and then come down here to fill and stroke. That will open this menu right here. A fill is the color on the inside of the shape that fills up the whole middle, kind of makes sense. The stroke is you can think of like a painter doing a painting stroke. It's the line around the outside edge or any edges there are. So the stroke are the lines, the fills, the color between the lines. And so I'm gonna to go to stroke paint. I'm gonna turn stroke paint on and I'm gonna make it 25500. Zero, zero. That's a nice dark red. The laser cuts on anything that's 25500. Zero, zero. If I have it at 25400, zero, zero, the laser will be like, well, I don't know what that is. That's some weird red color. It has to be exactly 25500. Zero, zero, so make sure you get it all the way slid up here. All right. Now, the other thing I like to do is go to stroke style and change. Whoops. Click back on it. Change the stroke style up to like a 0.4. That'll make the lines a little thicker and I'll make them easier to see from a distance. Okay, now the second thing we need to do is we need to make our document the right size for our laser cutting bed. So to change the document size, I'm gonna say File, Document Properties. And for custom size, I'm gonna choose centimeters here. And our laser is 60 centimeters wide, tab, 30 centimeters high, enter. Now at the same time, I'm going to go over here to the snap menu. And what snap is, is when you're moving objects around in Inkscape, if they get close together, uh, Inkscape will just snap their corners together. So it helps you line things up if you want things touching. They snap together. But if you have this snap set to a big distance like 20, even when they're far apart, they'll suddenly snap. And it's impossible to put them like close together without them snapping together. So I like making that smaller to like three point something. All right, so now this is the amount of space I have on my plywood. Now the plywood's never quite as big as the bed. So I wanna be careful not to, not to position it too close to an edge. So right there, I just got layer one done. I'm now gonna import layers two, three, and four. If you only had one layer, my advice to you is to copy and paste that layer. So click on it and go control C, control V, and then have two layers thick. Because if you leave it as just one layer, it's pretty flimsy, and as it gets moisture in it, it's gonna kind of warp over time. If you glue two layers together back to back and make them twice as thick, it'll be a much stronger, nicer wall clock. All right, but I need more than, I have more than one layer, but I have different layers, so I'm gonna go grab the rest of those layers now. So file, import, layer two, okay. And layer two is 29.454. So I'm going to put this one centimeters. All 
29.454, enter, change the stroke paint to 25500, good, stroke style to 0.4, and position it on the cutting bed. Awesome, now that one's just barely fitting. That was, okay, yeah, that's the tallest one I have. Okay. Almost, there's one a little bit taller. So right about like, yay, awesome. If I highlight both of them, I can actually, I don't need to do that. I'm not tell you that part. I'm gonna scooch this one over a little bit just to make it a little bit closer to the other one. That looks pretty good. Awesome. I do want a little bit of a gap. I don't want the laser to double burn an edge. It'll make it look weird and not good. Uh, so that's going to be my first cut. So those cut those two pieces first. Um, and but I'm going to go ahead and import the rest of the layers. So file, import, and layer three. Okay. Came in way too big. So I'm going to come here and say this should be 27.854, 27.845 actually. Change the stroke paint to red and the stroke style to 0.4. Drag this down here and go grab the next one. Import layer four. Okay. Change this to the 29.5. Good, and now stroke, turn on the red, pick it to 0.4, and drag this one down here and ready to go. So I've already positioned two of them on there and I can't fit any more on there. So what I need to do next is create a second file. But before I do that, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna highlight all of these out here by dragging a box around all of them. And I'm gonna say Control X for cut. I'm gonna cut them out. Now when I cut them, I didn't delete them. I just copied them to the clipboard so I can paste them back in in a second. This is gonna be my first um, sheet of plywood that I'm gonna cut. So I'm gonna do file, save as, and I'm gonna save this as, oh, before I do that actually, let me put this back, control V. Um, so those are the other two that I just cut. I need to figure out which one's which. So layer one is this one. It goes like on top of that one. And then I'm gonna highlight both of these and drag them on top of what I think is layer three there. Good. And then grab all of those and highlight them on layer four. And what I'm looking for now is do I wanna do something like adding numbers to this thing? So if I click, if I go in a little bit. So if I was gonna do a 12, I would do it, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I screwed up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Cause I did that random number of things. I'm not gonna really have a place to put numbers on it. Um, Otherwise it'd be in like really weird locations. But if I had made this 12 or a multiple of 12, like 24 copies of it, I would have a place to put a number all the way around in 12 locations. Now what I can do actually is I can put numbers on layer one on this. So I could number this around this narrow spot here, but I don't think it would look very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back apart there's one coming off, there's another one coming off, and there's those two. Um, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna move these two out of the way. I'm not gonna put any numbers. If I wanted to put numbers on it, here's all I would do. I would simply come over here to the text box, I would type in like, I don't know, 12, and then I would just highlight that and I would get whatever point I wanted, whatever size I wanted from it. So I would double click that. I could change the size up to 72. I could change the type of lettering it does, you know, depending on what I wanted it to look like. Um, and yeah, so I could take this one and I could drag it as black. So remember whenever it's, anything that's black is gonna be engraved. And I could just put that there. I could put it wherever I wanted to on it. 
I'm going to put it in that corner there. I have to shrink it, obviously, if I did that. Once I move it around, I lose my control over the font and stuff. To get it back, if I just click over here on the font tool, I get the font options back. So here I could take this down to like a 22 point font. And then I can move it by clicking on the arrow. And I can then place it inside. And I want to get it well inside because the laser is going to slice through the red part. And it's going to nick this 12. It won't look very nice like that. So I don't have a really good design for clock numbers on mine. So I'm not going to put any numbers on, but that's how you would go about doing it. All right. So now I've got four of them I need to cut. I'm going to take, I'm just going to cut two of them to start with. What is going on? There we go. I'm going to move this one over. Try and get it on there. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it a little better. And you can also use the arrow keys to move it small distances. So there's about centered. And I'm going to cut this one next to. And this is going to be page one of my files. So I'm going to highlight these two that don't make it on there. Do control X to get rid of them. And then file, save as. And I'm going to make a folder. So clocks, four layer heptagon. I'm going to create a folder called... Um, cut lines and inside that folder I'm going to do um, four layer I'm going to do the file name um, and then I'm going to do page one of I'm only going to need two pages one of two save once I do that that's been saved as page one or two now I'm going to do file save as and I'm going to save this as page two of two and click save now this file is page two but this is still the page one stuff so I'm going to highlight these two say delete those because they're on page one and put control V paste back the other two that I haven't put on yet and then position these two onto the cutting bed and once I've done that One more up. Oh, geez. I just moved it again. Yep. Right about there. I've got that. Now I'm going to go to um, file and save. So this is page two now totally done, saved, ready to go. At this point, I'm ready to take these files over to the computer, connect to the laser cutter and start cutting them again. Because I didn't do the, the like a multiple of 12 for the edges, I can't really get a very good job putting numbers on it. But if you wanted to, you could. All right, awesome. That's it.